Hello, welcome back. Turn 46. Uh, lots of vine men and some morrigans, first of all. Uh, I'm, I've been rec recruiting uh, vine men in the Woods of Weeping, of course. Uh, they're now scattered amongst some uh, commanders. Uh, well, amongst my pretender specifically. Uh, I'm also summoning them every turn in Drek, just so that there's something to defend Drek. Uh, and also, once I've got, you know, a decent little force of uh, vine men, I suppose I could send out some Furbolgs with some Vinemen to take back Gilgud. Uh, yeah. But I just thought I'd mention I'm doing that still. Uh, we spied a battle between Saramati and Agartha. Uh, after Saramati's rather disastrous a a assault on um, Agartha last turn, it looks like they're trying again. Uh, I'll, I'll just quickly watch this. I think this is just them fighting the province events. I haven't actually watched it yet, but... Um, yeah, significantly smaller force than last time around. But, uh, they don't have too many problems with province defense, fortunately. Uh, also a battle in Valadon. As you can see, Tinanog's group of two she lords took that province from us. Um, I can as only assume that they're going to move from Valadon to Gold Mountains next turn. Which is actually good, because that's the direction I want them to go in takes them far away from the path I'm taking towards them. So, because I don't want to accidentally bump them and have a fight. Oh, I'll get to that in a second. Anyway, um, unexpected events. Trees here. Seven white doves were seen flying east. This is interpreted by some as an omen of lasting peace. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. I'll talk about peace in a second though as well. Um, unexpected event in the Gold Mountains. A harsh law against vagrancy has been decreed. So more resources, but fewer... Uh, population. So that's this province he's about to take. That's nice, isn't it? Records from the census of this province have been lost, so we lost some province income in Gaeta, and in Ashington, a very ill omen was seen. Unrest plus 30, misfortune plus 3. Worldwide event, the stars are right for conjurations. Uh, so that's quite nice, actually. We are conjuring some vine men, after all. The entrance to the fortification in Fomoria has been breached. So we'll have to bear that in mind. Uh, and my troops in the Cursed Land are starting to starve. Did not expect that. But that's something to keep an eye on in the future as well. And finally, Megabless, the god of Ermor, has been permanently vanquished. So he was out of the game quite a while ago. We are, of course, sitting on his cap at the moment. Uh, but he and Micklin have been uh, just in as AR. You can see Micklin's got this one province here. But uh, they have been out of the game functionally for a very long time now. Okay, so what's happening this turn? Let's talk about peace first of all. I spoke to a Garthus player on IRC. I sent him a message saying, hey, do you want to make peace? And he said, sure. And the price for peace is that he wants Omor and Miklum. And fuck that, to be honest. Um, I want peace with him, but I don't want peace that badly. He could have Miklum, I suppose, but I'm not going to give him Miklum and Omor. Um, he is a bit more threatening than we thought. We can see all of his provinces with our scouts, so we know that he only has troops in the Haunted Woods and uh, Sailor's Haven. We need a scout in Agartha, actually. Let's move that guy. We also need a new scout here, don't we? Yeah. So let's move this guy. Uh, but he doesn't actually have that many units. We can see that his god has been reawoken. Uh, the army appears to be commanded by a new commercial yeast is used, so he does have his god back. But uh, I don't think he could break Ermor if he wanted to, to be honest. It's 850 defense. I'm going to start recruiting Furbogs here, and then again, these guys are going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be um, summoning Vinemen every turn, just so that it's full of chaff. But uh, I don't think he's that threatening. Far more threatening is the fact that Zibalba, as you can see in the bottom right, actually took his turn this turn. So he might be about to attack Miklum, finally, after... Sitting in this fort for so many turns, waiting for him to attack. Now that I've finally moved away, he suddenly comes back and decides to take his turn. So, we might not actually be in a position to give Micklin to Agartha in the first place, so I can't even make that peace deal. So, peace, I don't think is going to happen. I think we're going to continue to be at war with Agartha. And I think Zabalba is now back, so he's probably going to attack us as well. Uh, and of course we are still at war with Tiananog. So, not a great turn for us in terms of uh, diplomacy. In terms of movements, what are we doing? Well, first of all, three mages in the Woods of Weeping are staying behind. That's these three. Uh, 
everything else is moving on to Muspel. I've actually scripted these guys, they're like ready for combat. Um, so if you'd like, you can pause the video as I slowly scroll through this list of units. And you can see everything that's planned. There's lots of battlefield spells, lots of summon air elementals, there's a storm, there's a uh, rigor mortis and life after death. There's lots of thunder wards and lots of lightning bolts and lots of thunder strikes and lots of skeletons. Uh, and that is heading to Fomoria. But of course this army is useless without this army down here. So this army is also moving up to Flower Meadow and Searing Sands. I can't move them all together because we are starving. So we need to split because um, supplies are limited. So I'm sending all of the Great uh, Hawks, is that what they're called? Yeah, great Eagles, to Searing Sands. Because they require 75 supplies and everything else is going to Flower Meadow. And next turn they can both move to Ashington to consolidate. In Ermor, uh, the Jawbreaker is just preaching, and Medical Ethics is now empowering himself in nature. He forged the Thistle Mace last turn, which gets him to Nature 3. He's now empowering up to Nature 4. Well, up to Nature 3 and the booster gets him to 4 more correctly, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, last turn I said I wanted him to forge a booster to cast Howl. Uh, the plan now is actually to empower and have the booster to cast Relief instead. Um, my Pretender can cast Howl, this guy can cast Relief, that's the plan. So if I just go into the scripting, I don't know if I've showed off Relief yet, but it's here. It's Nature 5, but it does only require one gem. So if I'm Nature 4, I can use two gems to cast it, I believe. So this battlefield enchantment reduces the fatigue of all friendly units on the battlefield. So this is like the cure for Rigor Mortis, I guess. So if I've got both Rigor Mortis and Relief going, I guess it's... Rigor Mortis becomes a lot less severe on my troops. So I think this is a really important battlefield buff. So we're empowering him to cast uh, Relief. These troops are moving up. Now Fomoria broke... Um, and Sinanog broke Fomoria this turn, which means... They're probably going to siege the fort, or storm the fort this turn. And then they'll be sitting in it next turn. Alright, this is important. Because next turn I'll be two provinces away. Right? I'll be in Muspel, Searing Sands, and Flower Meadow. So next turn they'll have taken Fomoria, and they will be moving into either Red Waste or Ashington if they move. Right? That's important. So what my plan is, is that this turn I move to Muspel, Searing Sands, and Flower Meadow. Next turn I move to Ashington and Red Waste. But in the meantime, I want to keep. Uh, Tiananog's army trapped in Fomoria, which is why I kept these three mages behind in the Woods of Weeping. Because next turn what they're going to do is they're going to cloud trapeze onto Fomoria and hopefully kill the province defense. That will kill the province defense, put the fort, put the, um, fort under siege, and that will effectively lock Tiananog's army in the fort for a turn. Uh, now one turn is all I need of course, because the turn after that I'll move all of my troops from Ashington and Red Waste onto Fomoria. But um But I hope I hope that's clear what I, why what I'm doing anyway. Um because I can't get to Fomoria this turn and they are gonna take the fort this turn, they're probably gonna move out of Fomoria next turn and the fort will be theirs. So next turn, I'll cloud trapeze those three guys onto Fomoria to siege it, and hopefully lock the army in the fort for a turn, and that additional turn will allow me to get all of my troops to Fomoria. Does that make sense? It'll become clearer in the next few turns, I suppose, but that's my, my plan anyway. Uh, once Medical Ethicus is empowered, he can cloud uh to the front lines as well, of course. Um, yeah. So that's the plan. Uh, which is why I was, I was glad that I think he's going to move these two units from Valadin to Gold Mountains, because if he started moving down to take Red Way Shirazenton, it might intercept one of my armies. Um... I don't want that because I've given all of these units just enough gems to cast everything they need to cast. And if they accidentally blow gems on a, you know, fighting two mages, then that would be really frustrating. Anyway, that's the plan as it stands. I'm probably going to lose a lot of back provinces to uh, Zibalba and Agartha, but there's not much I can do about that. And we need to take Filmoria back, so that's what's happening. Uh, yeah, I think I've, I think I've laboured this point a bit much now, so I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll end the turn there, I suppose. 
Um, yeah. Hopefully I haven't missed anything. I actually did quite a lot of scripting and stuff that turn, so I, hopefully I didn't forget to do something or overlook something or make a mistake. Because that, that was quite simple to go through, but there's actually quite a lot of stuff I did that turn. Anyway, tune in next turn, and we'll see what happens. Turn 47 now. Um, so, Zibalba took... Before we get to the messages, Zibalba took his turn last turn, but I think all he did was um, log in to set himself AI. Because uh, he's gone AI this turn. So, I don't know what happened to Zibalba. Obviously he hasn't been able to play for the last uh, couple of turns. Uh, and he's left these giant stacks of units now under the control of the AI. So hopefully they'll attack Agartha for us, that'd be really nice. Uh, I put the province defense up in Green Sink and McClone to 15 to try and dissuade him. I'm pretty sure that the, um, the AI makes decisions about who to attack based on how much province defense is nearby. I'm, I think that might be true. But um, after we took all these provinces from uh, Agartha, he put the province defense in all of his provinces up. Uh, you can see from the reports. Local defense of this province appears to be quite well organized, quite well organized, very strong and well organized, uh, and so on. So, who Zubalba decides to attack is a mystery, but hopefully it's Agartha. Anyway, this turn, what's happening? So, we had one mage left in Fomoria, that was Cheat Butter, she cloud trapezed out. Uh, she's now... I don't know where she ended up, actually. Uh, she ended up in Flower Meadow, okay. Still summoning Vineman, right across the, uh, the continent. A die portent. Uh, this is Saramatia, who has cast the Well of Misery, I think it's called. Uh, this is another gem generating global spell. This one's the Death uh, Gem Generating Spell. And it seems like as a side effect, it also uh, reduces disease or something across the world. Uh, very expensive spell, 80 gems. But it generates free death gems, so that'll pay itself back. Uh, battles. Battle in Gold Mountains. So this was um, Tiananog's two she lords. They did take this province, uh, as we kind of expected them to. Battle in Sylvania, uh, Sylvania was uh, AI Zibalba taking back a province from uh, the Ivy King. That's over here. Uh, Battle in Fomoria. This was Relier uh, sending a single barbarian chief to attack Tien and Og. I don't know why, I don't know what that's about. Uh, and then there was a battle at our fortress in Fomoria. Uh, probably not worth watching because um, we didn't have a commander in this fight, so the troops that were left in the garrison just routed immediately. So the fight lasts two turns, and uh, then it ends. So it's not very interesting to watch, but uh, just to remind ourselves, this is what Tien and Og's army looks like. Uh, so we now we have officially lost Fomoria. It's no longer ours. So hopefully we can take it back uh, in a couple of turns. Unexpected events: fairy forest. The fertility cult has taken root. People pay secret offerings to Gaia and run naked in the woods at full moon. If this is to be stopped, brute force will be needed. <laughs> Growth plus two, dominion minus three. Uh, unexpected event in Ashlands: an ancient treasure has been unearthed. Forty gold. And in Searing Sands, an omen that spoke of the decline of the god was seen. <laughs> Dominion minus three, that does not sound good for us. Uh, worldwide event, the stars are still right for conjurations. And we lost another scout, which is a shame. Okay, so what's happening this turn? Well, uh, I didn't actually speak to Agartha again about peace, um, because I assumed Zabel was going to take Micklin from us and I wouldn't be able to barter it anyway. Um, but who knows, I might send her another message saying he can have Micklin if he wants it, as long as he stops attacking me. I'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll send him a message and just see what he says. Um, as you can see, Agartha's god, plus some alms, took this throne last turn. So if he claims the throne next turn, we'll get to see what throne that is. But, um, if I remember rightly, this throne was quite a threatening throne, right? This was like a really, really big one. Um... I'm pretty sure this might be like a level 3 throne or something that, that he just took. I can't quite remember. Uh, I guess I can consult the videos later on and see what what the um, what it looked like. But uh, yeah. So... Uh, that's the state of the world. In terms of what I'm doing, okay. So medical ethics, 
There's now Nature 4 with his booster. So he's cloud trapezing to Ashington. And we can see we have all of our troops uh, moving to Ashington, ready for next turn. Quite a lot of troops here. Uh, and of course the bulk of our army in Muspel, or at least the mages for our army in Muspel, are moving to Red Waste. So again, same army. Uh, this one's still ready and scripted. Uh, the other one in Ashington isn't scripted yet, there's lots of stuff that needs to be done there. Uh, other thing we're doing now, because we want to keep Fomoria's army in the fort, we don't want them moving out, because if they move into Red Waste, they'll fight half my army. And if they move into Ashington, they'll fight half my army. I don't want that. I want to fight with my whole army, so I need to keep them in the fort for one turn. So in order to do that, the four mages here in the Woods of Weeping, uh, let's just bring up their script. These four mages are cloud trapezing onto Fomoria. The goal is for these guys to kill the province defense and put the fort under siege, uh, thereby preventing from the Tiananog's army from moving out of the fort this turn. Uh, I don't know if that's how it works, I assume that's how it works, and I hope that's how it works. Uh, I also hope that we have enough stuff here to kill the province defense. Because who knows, you might put a load, I don't know, 30 points in or something. And, uh, I don't know, you might have a bunch of units patrolling, you never know. But uh, assuming he doesn't do that, assuming there's just a, you know, a moderate amount of province defense, I think we should be able to um, put the fort under siege this turn. Uh, that gives us one more turn to move into position, which is all we need. And then the turn after that we can start sieging from Moria with our combined force. Uh, hopefully, we have enough supplies to support that. Um, I assume we will, but I'm not... It's hard to tell. Uh, we're currently we're using minus 43 resources in Muspel currently, so that's quite nice. Using 77 in Searing Sands, 173 in Flower Meadow. So this army actually doesn't require any supplies, so that's actually great. So we only really need to support this part of the army. I think from where I can do that. It says it's a wasteland apparently, I didn't realise that, but... It must have great supplies, right? It's my capital province, it must have great supplies. Let's not worry about that. Uh, research is still pretty slow. Uh, and that's it for this turn, quite a short turn. There's not much else going on. Um, a Gotha could see Germa from where he is, so uh, I'm recruiting units in this province this turn. Uh, also summoning some vine men. There's nothing actually in the garrison currently. We want to make sure this is defensible. Uh, it only needs to hold out for a couple of turns, because if we take Fomoria, then we can start cloud trapezing sorceresses back to help defend. And if we don't take Fomoria, well that means my army's broken, so I'm probably out of the game anyway. So I'm not too concerned about him sieging Ermor. Um, that's everything. Gonna end the turn there. And uh, I'll see you on turn 48. Hello, welcome back. A uh, couple of messages. So first of all, a Gotha claimed that throne that we saw them take last turn. The throne of eternal suffering. Uh, so that'll be this throne. So that sounds nice, doesn't it? Eternal suffering, let's see what that does. Thrones. Uh, and it is a level 3 throne, I thought it was. It had a massive um, guard. Eternal suffering spreads dominion 3. Meaning it's order plus one, productivity plus one, and misfortune plus one. Wow, so that's quite a good throne, I suppose. Uh, I'd take one order and one productivity at the cost of one misfortune, I suppose. Maybe, I don't know. I suppose it just depends what your scales are, I guess. Um, if you're already mis misfortune two, I suppose having it go to misfortune three would be really bad, wouldn't it? Um, but anyway, we moved some majors around, of course, and uh, summoned some more vinemen. Uh, and we did manage to, um, well, we landed on Fomoria. So the reason why I was cloud trapezing onto Fomoria was because the ritual phase takes place before the movement phase. So if I was able to beat the province defense, uh, it would prevent him from moving out of the fort this turn. And as you can see, it only had three points of province defense. So the air elementals and the three skelly spammers was a bit much. Uh, there was nothing there. But you know, it was just insurance to make absolute certain that we would be able to kill any amount of province defense. Uh, and we did! So the fort is now under siege, which prevents him from leaving it, I think. Um, I'm not sure if being stealthy changes anything about that. I suppose he could um, 
He might have one of those uh, ritual spells that lets you move troops around. That would get him out of it. But um, if not, he's now trapped in the fort. So that will allow us to uh, fight his whole army next, well, in a couple of turns. So, so far so good. The question now is whether or not we can actually beat his army. Uh, then there was a battle in the furry forest. You can see um, Rilia here is uh, taking our provinces now on the coast. I guess he assumed that I was out of the game when he saw my cap fall. He is in for a shock. Um, so, lots of water elementals. I guess these are from bottles? Yeah. Lots of bottles of living water. Uh. I am a fucking event spawn thug, the Ichthyid Lord. Alright. Uh, <laughs> not the greatest thug I've ever seen in my life, but okay. Check out this guy. Wow. A mind lord. He's got an amulet over the fish so he can breathe. Enslave mind. Wow. Range 25 precision. So he can enslave 5 units over the course of a battle. That sounds pretty brutal. Still, this isn't the most terrifying. F what is this thing here? Okay. So, really, this army isn't that um, frightening, to be honest. Uh, and a battle in the Rusty Badlands. This was uh, the Grey Knights taking another one of my provinces. We've seen these guys before. Uh, not much I can do down here at the moment. Maybe in a couple of turns. Uh, unexpected events. A tribal chief from a distant land has donated gold and a precious item. 97 gold and lifelong protection. So where's that? So this is kind of an odd item. Um, so it's tainted and cursed, so once you put it on, you can't remove it, and it might horror mark you. But it um, summons two imps at the start of battle. Which is pretty interesting. I might put that on some kind of commander later on. Uh, what else have we got? A witch was caught. Misfortune plus three, magic plus two. Worldwide event. Conjurations are still cheap. Uh, sneaking any money was discovered, and uh, one of our scouts was discovered. And the fortification to Fomoria is unharmed, which isn't surprising. Alright, so what's happening this turn? Well, I'm moving one of these mages to Spire Woods to try and capture it. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that with one mage, because he's probably going to have those two uh, she lords, whatever they're called. Uh, in this area, they might move down to Spire Woods. If I fight them, I think I lose. But it would be nice to take that province because then that cuts off uh, any retreat options for Tina Nog. Um, and that's like the only move I'm making apart from attacking Fomoria. There's not really anything else going on. I'm still just doing little recruitment and I'm doing like, you know, I'm trying to build up a, a stock of units here in Armor. Same in Joak. Uh, I'll start trying to cap these, some of these provinces back in a second. Um, all that's kind of minor though. The main action this turn is that my two big armies are now attacking from Moria this turn. So, this is a lot of stuff. Um, it's literally everything I've got, so yeah, it, it, it's gonna take kind of a while to go through, so I'll, I'll just move through it slowly. I'll, I'll just refer to like the most important things. So, Ball is casting Rigor Mortis on turn one, and Drilling is casting Life After Death on turn one. They're like the big ones. Uh, Rigor Mortis is the battlefield um, I guess it's like a fatigue increasing spell for everybody, except the undead. And Life After Death is the one that, um, when your units die, they come back as spirits or something like that. I can't remember what they're called. Let me just check. Soulless. Um, so we've got Rigor Mortis, Life After Death. Um, all the Furbolgs cast Summon Lesser Elemental on turn 1. Um, the Sorceresses either Thunderstrike or Skeleton Spam, depending on what their highest path is. If they have Air 3, they do Thunderstrikes. If they don't, then they do Skeletons. Uh, same here. More Air Elementals from the Furbolgs. Uh, Playful Torture casts Arrowfend on turn 1. That's the one that makes uh, projectiles more likely to miss your troops. Uh, Superglue Fillings casts Mist on turn 1. That's the one that limits the uh, precision of spells and projectiles. Lots of protection from Lightnings and Thunder Wards and things like that. Um, I pretend to cast Howl on turn 1. That's the one that makes uh, wolves appear all around the battlefield. Uh, every turn. Uh, still more 
more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of stuff actually. Um, the furbogs all end up casting lightning bolts. I think mostly they do that anyway. Uh, and the Fomorian druids do thunder strikes, of course. Uh, Medical ethics cast relief. That's the fatigue curing spell. Uh, so that's like the counter to um, rigor mortis, I guess. Where's my storm caster? I definitely cast storm at some point. I must have gone past it. Uh, storm. Precision excision casts storm on turn one as well. Uh, anyway, lots of stuff gets cast on turn one. Lots of big battlefield spells. So we'll see how that goes anyway. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go because we've got a lot of troops, but um, Tinanog makes short work of troops by just thunderstriking them all to death. Uh, which is why I'm hoping that um, life after death will be a big sort of uh, a big help there, I guess, because it means I have to kill all my units twice, um, and then hopefully they they will stop spellcasting quite quickly because of rigor mortis, and then uh, my skeletons will clean up. That's kind of like my my uh, hope for what happens, and how will ensure that there's stuff coming from behind as well, which might distract the spellcasters from uh, casting thunder strikes at my troops if they're like trying to hit like random wolves and stuff like that. And uh, same deal for the air elementals, they might just make uh, a mess of targeting. Other than that, just got to see how it goes. But before we can fight Tinurg, of course, we have to actually break the fort, so that'll take a turn. So in two turns we'll probably be fighting uh, Tinurg's army. And we'll see how it goes. And if we take Fomoria back, then I'm going to immediately attack uh, Bandego. Uh, we're down to one candle in Fomoria because of the uh, Dominion that's been pushed by Rilia. You can see all these dark candles on the coast of Rilia. I don't like that at all. Uh, let's shove Rilia back in the ocean, and then we can then we can focus on taking back our provinces from Tiananog if everything goes well. Uh, but that's it for the turn. So I'll end it there. Uh, we're still getting attacked by Agotha and Rilia and Tiananog, and maybe AI is about, but I don't know. And um, Beritas had quite a large stack of units on the north as well. I'm not sure what he's going to do with that. But we'll find out soon, I'm, I'm sure. So, see you on turn 49. Hello. Very short turn this time. First of all, a message from Abyssia. Want to buy something that cures disease? Thanks in advance. That's a global message, I think. I believe that I heard on IRC that Abyssia was having some trouble with uh, some kind of stealth unit on one of his provinces that was equipped with a diseasing item, or something like that. So I guess uh, something is diseasing him and he doesn't know how to deal with it. So that's quite funny. Uh, still summoning Vineman. We cloud trapezed uh, another commander to the front lines at Fomoria. Two battles. Uh, Agotha attacked us. One in Wicker Woods and one in Ermor itself. So Wicker Woods is uh, a little army to cap the uh, adjacent provinces. And we got attacked in Ermor itself. So let's take a look at the little army first. Which is just uh, an Earth Reader and uh, a couple of living Mercuries. Uh, nothing too interesting. We've seen these units before. It's quite funny that the uh, commander is uh, poisoned because he started uh, he started the fight too close to the Mercuries. Unfortunately, he doesn't die, but that would be very funny if he did. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, then we were attacked in Ermor. So, I don't think he's going to be able to take this fort anytime soon. He might just leave a couple of units on it to uh, keep sieging it while he moves on. Oh, but he, I don't think he can even do that, can he? Because he hasn't got a commander. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they're ever going to take this fort from us with that many units. We, we've got 44 units in the garrison, and uh, Elmore has 850 defense, so... Defense left 793, so that would take quite a few turns. And we're going to keep summoning Vinemen, which I think would, is going to increase our defensive score. So I don't know, might take a while. Uh, also battling Spirewoods. So that was me attacking Spirewoods with that one um, Sorceress. I was a bit unsure, I thought it might be difficult if there was a lot of province defense, and guess what? There was a lot of province defense. Um, but I'll just put it on turbo. 
and uh, you kind of get the gist of what happens. There's just uh, there's just enough skeletons to uh, beat back the province defense. And there we go. They're out finally. So we did manage to take this province. So we cut off uh, Tinonog's retreat. So that is quite good for us. Uh, also, as you can see, Beratos decided to attack Kinoral. Uh, so Beratos is attacking Tinonog, I guess? I think that's good for us? Um, it means we've lost Kinoral forever, uh, because I don't fancy attacking Beratos. Um, we're going to have to deal with Rilia. We're going to have to clean up these Rilia provinces take these provinces back and then I guess I'll, I'll just try and talk to Beratus and say hey I won't interfere with your war with Tinanog if uh, you don't interfere with me which will leave me free to concentrate on Agatha again uh, but that hinges on me actually being able to beat Tinanog at Fomoria uh, unexpected event unrest plus 30 unexpected event uh, a large group of people have started to worship a false pretender the leads of the group were swiftly killed, but faith has decreased and unrest is rising. Okay. Uh, lost a scout. Jesus, that's a lot of beast bats. Uh, we're under siege of Nomor. Walls are damaged. Started to destroy the gate in Fomoria, but we need more time to succeed. This surprised me. I would have thought we broke it in one turn. But I suppose that's a bit optimistic, because he does have, like, th what, 300, was it? Or 250 units defending? So it might take a while. And uh, Micklin's out. Alright, so what's happening this turn? Nothing. We're sieging for Moria, and I'm going to try and take another uh, province from Tinanog. Uh, I put 21 points of province defense into Spirewoods. Don't know why. Uh, I also put the province defense up in Micklin and Green Sink to try and dissuade Zabalba from attacking us. He's still a wild card. Uh, and that's, that is literally it. In Irma, we're just summoning more uh, Vine men. In uh, Black Forest, we're recruiting a Furball Druid. In Woods of Weeping, we're recruiting a Fomorian Druid, Malverni, it's a Philbog Druid, Drek, a couple of units, Micklin, a couple of units and a commander. So we'll start trying to take back these provinces next turn with some units. And that is it. So, uh, not much change down here. I'm not sure where it uh, looks like Saramati is completely cut off now. That's not good for him. Don't know what he's doing. Um, really a stall on the coast here as well. Maybe he's building another fort. That would be annoying. Uh, I don't know. But that's the end of the turn. So, can't really do much until we've finished storming, uh, sieging for Moria. So, just have to wait and see what happens, I guess. See you on turn 50. Hello. Welcome to turn 50. I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is turn 50. Um, so we made it to turn 50, which is, I think that's an achievement in itself, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, first of all, two messages from Rilia. Aha, so you are alive. When the elf fuckers took your cap, I assumed you were gone. Want this shitty province back? Uh, yeah, we want that shitty province back, actually. Uh, and another message. Sorry all for not being relevant to last turn. Uh, I think really uh, staled last turn, which is what that's about. Uh, cast a couple of spells. The Jawbreaker cast Spirit Mastery. What is Spirit Mastery, you might ask? Well, I knew that I wanted to summon some more stuff to help defend this fort last turn. So I turned in my Hour of Need to um, Spirit Mastery. Because it, it said it summons uh, 15 plus units. And it only requires death one, which the Jawbreaker is. So I thought, oh, they might help defend the uh, fort. But I also learned recently that how good you are at attacking or defending a fort depends on your strength. And dispossessed spirits, as it turns out, have one strength. So actually, they're really bad at defending forts. But there we go. Uh, I summoned some of them anyway. This turn he's going to cast reanimation instead, which produces some skeletons. So we'll check out those next turn. Uh, it's unfortunate he isn't powerful enough to summon Morrigan, because we'd do that, of course, but uh, gotta make do with what you got. Uh, also, suddenly the fortress in Ermor started to shatter. Uh, both the fort and its inhabitants have been damaged, four of our units were killed and 28 were wounded. 
Uh, that's kind of bad because I thought it would take him ages, uh, take a Garth ages to see Germor, but apparently now the fort is already down to 343 defense. So if he casts that spell again, the fort will probably be broken already. So that's pretty bad for us. Uh, so Irma might fall quite quickly. Then there's a battle in Fomoria. Uh, Tina Naga attacked us with one Atelvi chieftain. I assume this was just to find out how many troops I had sieging the fort. Um, which is nice because it actually tells us how many units I have sieging the fort as well. Uh, and it's 521. That's quite a lot. As you can probably guess, this Atelvi chieftain dies very quickly. Nothing much happens in this fight, but uh, it happened. Battle in Honoria, the Grey Knights. Still walking around Captain Provinces. We'll have to do something about that soon. Battle in Dragon Scale Mountains. This is uh, one of my sorceresses taking the province back from uh, Tinanog. So you can see Tinanog did put the province defense up in this province quite high again. Uh, and it's quite good PD as well. It's these cavalry guys. Uh, but fortunately, skeletons win over the day yet again. Uh, and they route quite soon. Yep, yeah, there we go. So even a large amount of cavalry PD is no match for us. Battle in Ashlands, the uh, Living Mercuries are still taking the provinces adjacent to Elmore. Uh, that's too bad. We'll have to do something about all this soon, but uh, first things first, of course. Then there's this unfortunate battle. Uh, Zibalba attacked us. Not good. I don't want Zibalba attacking me. But uh, not anything I can do about that at all. So, Captain and Spearman. That sounds like a mercenary company, doesn't it? Let's just check that. Uh, yeah, Dante Stingers. Apparently he also has the Master Assassin, so I'll be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, and then a battle in Runia. This was uh, Saramatia sieging the, storming the fort in uh, Runia, held by Agartha. And uh, they summon Earth Power on turn one. Agartha that is. And then they cast Earthquake, which kills a lot of things, and a lot of living Earths as well. Uh, yeah. No more spells are cast in this battle, I don't think. Nothing big, anyway. Uh, you can see what happens, though. All those Earth Elementals slowly die, and then all the Mages slowly die as well. So we'll stop watching that. This was the result. Quite a few losses, 27 of them for Saramatia, including uh, two Mages. But uh, Agartha did lose the fort. So we can see over here, where is it? Here. Uh, Saramatia now owns the fort in Runia, which is actually really close to Agartha's capital. So maybe that will prompt some uh, response from Agartha? Not sure. Uh, unexpected event in Marverni, two nature gems, found in the split trunk of an oak. Unexpected event in Tresia, we killed another troll, or found his lair at least. The troll itself escaped as usual. Uh, but lots of gems, as you can see. 57 gold and a Burklaw Talisman. So I'll just show off that item as well. Burklaw Talisman. It gives strength plus 5 and morale plus 2. It's a very manly talisman and it is said that a woman wearing it will grow a deeper voice and maybe even a beard. So there you go. Uh, found a scout. Not very interesting. Under Siege in Ermor. Walls are damaged, we know that and the entrance to the fortification in Fomoria has been breached. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're storming the castle, of course. Uh, so we'll attack Fomoria this turn. Hopefully we don't lose too many units. That's the crucial thing. We, we, we want to completely wipe Tinanog. We want to lose nothing. Whether or not that's possible, I don't know, but we'll find out next turn. Um, so that's the major movement this turn. My sorceress is continuing to uh, take provinces. She's attacking Springspire next. Hopefully we'll take that too. 
Uh, I'm finally going to start taking provinces back from the Grey Knights. If I just hit Y, you can see a lot of crap units, but uh, they're backed up by a lot of crap mages as well. <laughs> but uh, presumably this will be enough to kill province defense. Um, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. The Vine Men don't have great stats. In fact, they have awful stats, but you know, they're just there to um, distract from my fairly decent units, the Amazons and the uh, Furbog Warriors. And they're backed up by a lot of little spells, so, you know, I'm sure that'll be enough to kill Province Defense. Uh, and that's it for movements. Quite a simple turn. Research, 165 a turn. Going through evocations, um, I am planning on reaching uh, Reign of Stones at some point, but it's probably going to take a long time. Um, and that's it. So... Agartha might take Elmore from us soon. Uh, I haven't spoken to Beritus yet about his war. I haven't spoken to Rulia yet. I'll send Rulia a quick message. Um, and that's... I think that's everything. So next turn, we will battle Tinanog's army in Fomoria. Assuming it's still there. I can only imagine it is. Uh, so... I guess I'll see you in the next video, and that should be quite exciting. And hopefully, I don't lose horribly. But we shall see. <laughs>